Welcome back to Jewelry Making Made Easy by Ellen. Today I am trying a different angle with my camera. So if you would be so gracious as to tell me in the comments whether it helps at seeing things close up or not, I would appreciate it. Or if it's just not working out at all. So what I had said I wanted to do was work on a mini series of making economical wedding jewelry for bridesmaids, um, brides, etc. You could use whatever techniques you use, which are very simple techniques for this jewelry for anything else besides the uh, pearls that I am using. But this I thought was a great idea. We've had uh, one, two, three, four weddings this past uh, few months. And I'll tell you what, the prices add up if you have to go out and buy jewelry for bridesmaids and brides. And this is a very inexpensive way, and a, with beautiful jewelry, to uh, get over one of those many hurdles when trying to put together a wedding. So we'll get started today. We're working on a graduated, this is a uh, very popular necklace. See, I forgot where the camera was already. And it's been around for many, many years. Graduated pearls. And very simple and can be very inexpensive to make. Here are the earrings. Where do I have the camera? <laughs> okay. Graduated as well. The tools we'll be using today are a crimping plier, two flat nose pliers, a round nose plier, and a cutter. And I'm going to put them to the side here, out of my way, until I need them. And we will be using, I use soft flex beading wire. And this is a uh, fine 0.014 inch diameter. And it's a 10 pound strength, which is plenty strong enough. Normally I work right off of the spool, but for those of you that uh, might be buying kits and don't have a spool, I am going to, I already cut myself uh, 22 inches. This is an 18 inch necklace, and I think 22 inches will be more than enough. And what we're using are uh, Czech round white pearls. We have uh, 14 4 millimeter. We have 18 6 millimeter, 18 8 millimeter, 14 10 millimeter, and 7 12 millimeter. And that includes uh, the beads for the earrings. I just put those aside and I put them out in the order that we're going to use them. Here's the center going out. We have the, uh, this is 12 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 8 millimeter, 6, and 4 millimeter. So what we're going to start doing is, and I've shown this before, and for those that have never seen how to put on a uh, clasp, you take your beading wire and slide a crimp on it. I use two by two millimeter crimp tubes, and the reason for that is they can be folded twice, and it's very strong, very secure. If your necklace ever breaks, it will not be because the clasp is not on there correctly doing it this way. Okay, so we went through the uh, the crimp tube and we're going to put on the, the first end, I'll put on the split ring. And split rings are, for those that don't know, better than jump rings because they go around twice and the uh, thread is not going to slide through as it would on a jump ring. So through the crimp, oops, don't lose it, through the split ring, and then back through the crimp again. Again, for those that don't know, I just leave a little excess hanging out there and slide that crimp tube just about up to the split ring, leaving a little bit of space between the tube and the split ring. 
For those that have never used a crimping plier before, they have uh, two sets of grooves. Grooves in the front and grooves in the back. We start by laying this crimp tube in the back groove. Hold your wires separated and squish that really tight. And what happens is it makes a fold right in the center. Is that clear? Right in the center with a wire hanging out each side. And then what we do is we take the front groove of the plier, place it over. The crimp tube is laying flat this way. Place it over the top of that crimp tube and sit the edges into the top groove and squeeze. And that is going to fold that in half. Now that uh, I am pulling really tight on this, that will never, ever, ever <laughs> come out. And because I don't like the looks, and you'll find a lot of jewelry that you buy in the stores, don't bother doing this, but I do not like the looks of that on my jewelry. So I use crimp covers. It gives it a more professional look. Crimp covers are like little Pac-Men. Actually, it's jumping around like a little Pac-Man. It's got a split in the center. And what we do is we sit that crimp inside that split in that round bead. And I'm hoping that you could see that. Let me see if I can get it up by the camera. See it's sitting right inside of that split in the uh, The crimp cover. Then I go over, you don't need to use your crimping plier for that. You could actually use a flat nose plier, but I'm just so used to using the uh, crimping plier, that's what I usually grab. Whatever's comfortable for you. And for those that don't have all these tools, I'm going to follow up this video with a video on how to do this necklace without any tools, believe it or not. Okay, so now what we have is a nice round silver bead instead of that ugly old crimp. Now the way I have the uh, beads laid out are the order that they're going in. We're working from the four millimeter up, four millimeter, six millimeter, eight, 10, 12, and then back down again. So what I did was I split the, uh, the beads in half. We have uh, six of the four millimeter on each end. So I'm gonna go ahead and string on those. And then I'm going to string on the rest in order. Now most glass beads come on a strand and for some strange reason one side, one of the holes, seems to be a little bit bigger than the other. So I just roll it around in my hand and find the bigger one to make life easier. Except on the very, very end. Because on the end you're going to uh, Go through it twice, like so. We're going to feed that XX wire, which will probably fall now, but I want to show you what I'm talking about. Back through, and I didn't find the bigger hole here. But we're going to feed that back through. <laughs> the pearl. And I'm good at telling people how to do things and forget to do them myself. So this is actually going through, but not easily. That's why the 
larger end has to be out. So normally I go through two or three beads just for security, which probably isn't necessary because you know what? I'm telling you, if you use those two by two crimps, that's never coming out of there. So I just cut off the excess wire there and continue stringing the rest of the beads on. So we've got our uh, six. That's the silver one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to do three, eight of the uh, six millimeter. Very simple project, timeless piece, goes with almost any outfit and looks absolutely beautiful with uh, bridesmaids dresses, wedding gowns. It doesn't overshadow the dress, just complements it. And it is a timeless piece. They've been around for ever. Okay, now we're doing the eight millimeters. There are two, there's eight of those also. And it takes no time at all. Once you get a hang of the crimping thing, if you have never done it before, Four, six, eight, these are tens. We've got six of these. of the, uh, and I use an odd number of the largest bead, whatever beads you're using, because it, I like it to fall just that way. So you have one large one in the center and two on the sides, or you could do four on the sides, but this is the way I made it. So five of the uh, 12 millimeter. Then there'll be one of each size on the earrings. And we're back working our way back down to 10 millimeters. I'm not very good of uh, talking while I'm working, but I did want to uh, mention that, again, I know I've mentioned it before, that I have the kits, and the kits will have the exact amount of beads in them so that uh, you don't have to go out and buy all the, uh, all the findings, a strand of each size of beads, And I th I'm pretty sure the kit is only $8. It has everything in it to make the earrings and the necklace. Now, if you were making uh, jewelry for six bridesmaids, that would only be $48. And you'd have that co covered. If you look around at jewelry for bridesmaids, you can spend a lot of money. And there are already so many expenses. And this is something pretty that they can use and keep for a very long time. They'll go with every outfit. Now we're down to the six millimeters. 
I remember the uh, one wedding <laughs> that I went to, one of my husband's best friends years and years ago, and uh, I really didn't know the girl, but she had asked me, I suppose as a kindness, so that we could be together, my husband and I could be together at the wedding, to be a bridesmaid. And I told her I was a little concerned about the cost of the dress. Now this is many years ago, and I'd probably be concerned now also because they are very expensive. And she said, oh, don't worry, it's a beautiful dress, it's very inexpensive, and you can wear it to church on Sundays. I wish I had a picture of that dress. Once I saw it, I thought, wear it to church on Sunday? What is it, the church of ill repute? <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> it was not only flashy, it was very revealing. I was very embarrassed. Anyway, we are down to the last of our four millimeter beads. And I really did not look at the clock to see how long it took to get this far. Let's see if it's on the timer here. Well, it shows 16 minutes, but I know I did a bunch of talking in the beginning. Okay, so now we have it all strung. Our extra wire is tucked in and cut off on the other end. And now we're going to put the lobster claw on this end. So back to square one. We're going to pick up our 2 by 2 crimp bead. Pick up our lobster claw. Always make sure your uh, lobster is working because every once in a while you'll find one that doesn't before you go and crimp it on there. Okay, string that on. Now we're going to go back through the 2x2 two two crimp. And pull it down fairly close, leaving a little bit more room. This time we have to have room for the uh, we have to have room for the crimp cover and there should always be a little space. It should not be tight because otherwise there's too much stress on the wire and there is not really a very nice flow to the necklace if you have it tight. So I would say, oh, I could not even tell you how much room I have there. Probably could use a little tiny bit more. I suppose I could try to measure it. My eyes are not that good. I would say between the... Push these down. between the crimp bead and the clasp there is an eighth of an inch. So that gives us room enough to put the crimp cover on. It's a four millimeter crimp cover and play for the necklace to see there's a little play in this. should always be a tiny little play because then it's uh, more liquid looking. If it were really tight, let's see if I can make you, let you see what it would be like tight. It's stiff. With the play in there, it's a lot prettier. Okay, back to, we put on our crimp, went through the lobster, back through the crimp, left ourselves about an eighth of an inch. We're laying the crimp in the back groove of the crimping plier, holding the uh, wire and the two wires separated from each other. Crimp it closed. And then, see they are separated from each other. Then we're going to go over the top and place the top groove over the top of the the crimp which is laying this way. We want one side of the groove to sit next to each side of that crimp because we're folding it in half now and squeeze. 
So now, again, that is never coming out of there. Never, ever, ever. I've had jewelry break, but not from, not from the clasp. Then we're going to, and again, I didn't look to see if I had the large hole at this end. So it's going to be probably a little bit more difficult to get that wire back through there a second time. But, oh, I looked out. It's going through. Not easily, but it's going through. Okay, and I'm, again, I'm only going to go through one bead. Two or three always makes me feel better, but there really is no very, very good reason for it. Okay, so I clipped off the excess. I'm going to sit that ugly looking crimp inside of my crimp cover, which is like a little Pac-Man, a round bead with a uh, with a slit in the center of it. See, that was plenty of water. This is what we've got left over. Sit that down in there, inside of the crimp cover. Sitting the crimp bead inside the crimp cover, going over the top with either your crimping plier or a round nose plier, and just squeezing it closed. So now we have a little silver bead instead of the ugly crimp. Now, I heard a little whining a second ago. If she starts again, I'll pick her up and let her say hello. My little Macy girl gets impatient with me. Okay, so how simple was that? And it definitely didn't take more than 15 minutes. I mean, the video ran 22 minutes, but I know my mouth ran for quite a while. So now we are going to do the earrings. Again, very simple. There's my beads. One in each side size. There goes that tongue again. What did I do here? Took out two. Okay. Put them in order. Take your head pin. And if you don't know what a head pin is, it's just a wire. This is a three inch head pin with a flat end, which prevents the beads from falling off. And I will string them on. There's my 12 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 8 millimeter, 6 millimeter, and my 4 millimeter. Do the other one. 12. 10, 8, 6, and 4. Okay. I've seen many different ways of attaching earrings to ear wires. Well, this is the way I do it. I put my round nose pliers just above, leaving a little tiny bit of room between the pearl and the plier, not even an eighth of an inch, bend it at a 90 degree angle, then I pull that wire up around the top, can you see it this way? of the plier and then I just turn my plier up so I can pull that wire, continue to pull that plier underneath. So now I have a full loop. I'm sorry that I went out of frame there. I will do it again on the other one. I hold that loop 
with my round nose plier or flat nose, whatever. And I make a little tiny space so that they're not laying right on top of each other because I want to put my ear wire in there. Other people do it differently. This is the way I'm comfortable. I slid my little ear wire on there, grabbed the loop again, and I like using my round nose plier. It's more comfortable. And start to pull. I'll take a little flat nose so that I can pull it tight. Pull my excess wire around the base two or three times. Till I get close to the pearl and clip the excess off as close as I possibly can. And it's not wanting to clip. There it goes. And if it's a little crooked, you just Take your flat nose, hold it there, and straighten it out. Wire is very forgiving. I like to feel it, see if there's any wire sticking out. If there is, I just take my flat nose and kind of crunch down what's sticking out, but nothing is sticking out there. I got it close enough. So one done. Now I'll try to stay in frame. <laughs> This is what happens when I move the camera around. I don't know where to put my hands. Okay, now, making sure that there is no excess sticking out the bottom, push all your beads down, as far down as you can get them. I kind of rest the beads on my finger so I can feel that nothing is sticking out. Get my round nose plier, put it at the top of the beads, leaving a tiny bit of extra space between the bead and the round nose plier. Bend it at a 90 degree angle. Pull that wire up and around the top. Grab my earring and just turn my what? My uh, round nose plier up so that I can grab that excess wire and pull it under so now I have a complete loop. Now I grab my loop, separate a little bit between the excess wire and the, the stem of the loop so that I can slide the loop on my ear wire onto that wire and up into the earring loop, not the ear wire loop. Now they're attached to each other. Then I will grab the loop again. I like to use a little flat nose. You can certainly use your hand to pull that wire around, but I feel like I have more control over how neatly and tightly I can wrap that loop around two or three times till I'm uh, close to the pearl. And then just snip off the excess. Am I in camera here? Just get the tip of my uh, cutter down as close as I can to the pearl. Snip it off. There's a little tiny excess sticking out that would poke me so I'm just going to take my flat nose and flatten it. See if it's hanging straight. If not, I would just straighten it out. It is straight and that little piece of wire is still sticking out. Okay, got it. Now we have a complete set. Reads for a bride or a bridesmaid in a 
timeless. Set. Thank you for watching. And if you really don't want to use tools, I am going to do a short video on how to make this necklace without any tools. It's just like the uh, video that I, I did on knotting pearls. I really didn't need any tools for that. And I thought, well, for those that don't want to mess around with tools, you could probably just go ahead and use that technique to make a necklace. I haven't figured out how to do the earrings yet, but I will by the time I do the, the video. Thank you again for watching, and please stay tuned for the next couple of videos that I'm doing. I'll show you really quickly the ones that I do want to show you. As you can see through this plastic, I keep everything covered in plastic. This is a sterling silver set that is very simple, quick to make. And then I have this um, other tools in the way. Yeah, the camera is not catching the whole thing. Okay, here is the bottom of the necklace. It's a long chain. And then the earrings are very, very long. Very pretty. Okay, again, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Please subscribe to me and stay tuned for lots of jewelry making made easy. Have a blessed day.